Tom Mikazi here with an earnings preview for the rest of this week. Uh, in the future, I'll be making these over the weekend, but wanted to give you guys a preview of what's to come for earnings season. In this video, we're going to be covering a couple of bank earnings as well as some insurance earnings and then Taiwan semiconductors, which will give us some insight into the tech and semiconductor industry. So what we're going to be covering is kind of the expected moves, and then I'll gotta go through my prediction on why I think that. So jump right in with Taiwan semiconductors, if I can get this to stay up. So uh, data is pretty simple. Expected EPS is around 150, depending on the source. Revenue is around 18 plus billion as well. Uh, expected move is about 7%. Now I could see this with the falling wedge having a large move. It has gaps to the upside and to the downside, as you can see on this chart to the right. Uh, last move was down 3%. Now, according to the fundamentals, this is a fairly valued stock, so I'm not super bearish on it. What I'm really worried about is if they're having decreasing orders from their major clients, such as Apple, uh, Intel, um, and the car industry. And I've been hearing some rumors that they, uh, NVIDIA, Apple, all of them are trying to lower their wafer orders in anticipation of lower demand with uh, the recession and inflation going on in the future. And I don't know if that's true or not, but it is cause for concern. Now I do say here, I went through the, the data and we did have the uh, nine beats the last out of 10, um, but that doesn't always mean it's gonna go up. In fact, you know, they beat almost every single time, but then again, they go down 60% of the time. Um, and that has to do with TSM was just simply overvalued along with a lot of the stocks in the stock market. So if we do get a beat and guidance is good, I could see this going up to about 82, uh, filling that short term gap above the 618 retracement from the high. Uh, if we do get really, really good earnings and go as high as 88, I don't expect a move larger than that. That would be a 10% move about, uh, which would be larger than the expected move. And I would imagine we would probably sell off back down to 82 um, and retest this falling wedge breakout if we do get that breakout. If we do get a kind of a run of the mill earnings, you know, they'll probably beat, but by how much and are their, are their guidance going to be good? If they do beat, it's going to be coming down to whether the guidance is uh, raising or reaffirmed. If they lower guidance and they talk about unforeseen headwinds, I, I hear that phrase all the time, um, or uh, supply chain issues, those are kryptonite words. We do not want to hear those. And that could have us go all the way down to 69 and possibly as low as 65 to the bottom of this wedge, the 786 retracement. Now, if we do that, that would be a really good entry spot because that would be the bottom of the wedge um, and you could take some long positions there. So that's Taiwan Semiconductors. That's going to set us up for NVIDIA, AMD, Intel earnings going forward as well. So pay attention to this because it's really going to set up the semiconductor industry on what's to come. All right. Our first bank earnings are tomorrow, uh, led by our one of the largest in the world, JPM Morgan Chase. Uh, expected move 2.9, about revenue about $32 billion. Uh, expected moves about 55 to 6%. On average, they you know move about half of that. So keep in mind, all these move, expected moves are always larger than the average move. And you know what's funny about JPM is they almost always beat too, but they've gone down the last nine earnings, and I can definitely see that being the case here as well. Can especially considering all the challenges that are going to be facing banks with the recession, inflation, uh, housing market uh, cooling down. Um, Etc. Especially, you know, if they make a lot of money in the stock market, that's not going to help either. Or bonds, that's not going to help. So I'm looking on this potentially going to the downside, um, down to about 105 off our earnings. It could trade as low as about 104, but I think 105, 108 area is going to be where it's going to push down. Now, if they do have a, a guidance raise or they say something um, in the guidance call, I could see this pushing all the way up to 119 and retesting. Um, previous high if something crazy happened you know we could fill that gap up to 125 but i would like to see uh eps beat guidance beat and guidance raise but i, I don't i don't anticipate those things happening uh, it's going to be a lot of the same story here with morgan stanley a lot of the banks we're going to be talking about and the nice thing about morgan stanley is they're a little bit more of a diversified bank 
Uh, they get a lot of their money as well from their brokerage that they own. And so while this normally has an expected move about 7%, you know, on average it moves about 2%. So I could see this filling that gap up to 76 immediately off of a good earnings because they should beat um, potentially up to 78 area and as high as 81. Uh, we could retest that previous high. I don't expect with the market how it is for this to break that channel that it's in. That's why I'm thinking 81 is probably going to be the highest and lower guidance, of course, could go to the bottom of the channel as low as that 68 to 71 range. Citigroup uh, had a lot of Russia exposure and they seem to have shed that now. So I think a lot of that's priced in. So last you did see they, they, they've gone down quite a bit, even though they beat most earnings nine out of the last 10 they beat but they've gone down seven out of the last 10 you know average move 2.4 percent this is expected to move over six percent i think we're probably going to get some movement this time so last move one and a half percent settled at the end of the day i think on a good note they could fill that gap up to that 49.95 50 mark that would be a downtrend break and could re signal a reversal all depends on like i said it's always going to depend on the guidance and the EPS matters not right now. What really matters is guidance, guidance, guidance on a lot of these because a lot of people want to know with all of the things going on in the world, um, how are businesses responding to that? So unfortunately, banks have large gaps below from their original breakouts last year. And so I think a lot of those get filled before we go up. And that one on this goes down to 43. And that's marked with the red line over here. Last bank earnings we need to talk about here is I have a couple more U.S. Bank. I really like U.S. Bank, but the similar story to Citibank. They have that huge gap down to 43, 43 41 area. Um, this is going to be a lot of the same with the, with the banks here. And so I will upload all of these to my Twitter. So if you want to get these these cards, all of them individually on there, you can go download them um, at Tomikaze1 on Twitter. And that's uh, linked in the description here. So Wells Fargo uh, had a huge run, had one of the best bank runs, I think, uh, from low to high, but is now kind of returning to the mean here. I think this one is within the bear flag that it's in right now, broke below it today. I think we see that retested through 3660. With it being beaten down so much, I'm not sure if we see much lower on this, so I'm not sure uh, if this one's the right one to play, but depending on the the IV of the premiums Thursday through Friday might be worth a lotto. Night Healthcare is one of our first insurance carriers coming up. Uh, we do have a rising wedge breakdown that we had today, so that is cause for concern. But they've never missed any of their earnings of the last 10 that they've reported. It's about 50-50 whether it's going to go up or down. Better than the ones that we've been looking at with the banks, right? So they have an expected revenue just shy of $80 billion. Expected move just under 5%. Last earnings, they moved about $30 up before coming right back down. Um, and actually, yeah, they moved up $35, and they actually ended up day red, so it was a big pump and dump off of earnings. I could see a similar situation here with this potentially going up to, say, 528, 530 area. It's so maybe as high as 535 and getting a full breakout of last uh, last high. Now, if they do have bad guidance, which, you know, insurance industry, it's just Everyone still needs insurance, so I don't expect that to necessarily be the case, especially um, with all the government grants and everything for insurance. I, I do lean on the bullish side, but the, the technical chart is what gives me cause for concern. I'm probably going to end up skipping this one. Progressive, another insurance carrier, um, kind of in a rising wedge on the larger time frame, but also uh, has an up-channel break and retest to end the day today. I could see this potentially going all the way down to that 110 mark. Uh, if I were to play this one, I would probably play it to the downside. I don't think guidance um, is going to be bad. I just don't think it's going to be enough for investors to get super excited. I don't think there's a ton of upside in progressive right now. So that covers the earnings I'm looking at this week. I'll do another video this weekend. So if you want to get an alert when that comes out, make sure you click subscribe, turn on the notifications and uh, go ahead and give this a like. If you really like these, I'll do a lot more of these. So thank you and have a great day.